Hey, Don here. Okay, back with another not live stream. Um, going to go back to work on the Net Pro Max, the uh, Fedora 29 server set up. And um, let's see, yesterday I finally got, uh, was able to get it to where I could log into Mate Desktop, and it ran good on Mate Desktop, much better than I expected. Uh, I don't know if they've lightened up Mate Desktop in Fedora 29 or or. Well, of course, I've never had it on this machine before, so it is a 2.8 gigahertz. But it's only a single core with 2 gig of RAM, but maybe that, uh, well, the, the one before the, uh, the IBM web server, it was 2.5 gigahertz, so along with 2 gig of RAM. So, you know, there's not a big jump there. <clears throat> so uh, it didn't run good on, uh, on Mate Desktop. I had to use XFCE when I wanted to use the desktop on it, but uh, I have XFCE on here, too. Started out with that, and I didn't plan on putting Mate on there. <coughs> but uh, then I had trouble getting into uh, uh, getting. Well, I didn't have trouble um, ex exactly. I mean, I found the instructions that I had used back in Fedora 23, and what I expected is to get a graphic logon screen, you know. But I didn't. I got uh, just still got the terminal screen. So you have. Turns out I can't find any way to do anything different than to just. And it told you in the instructions once you. Run the commands, install your desktop, run another command to edit some config files, and then you type this type start X. And so uh, that's what I've been doing. I, I, I was familiar with the command from back in the older Linux distro. Some of them, that's the only way you could get into the GUI, especially the uh, live systems and stuff or rescue systems. So anyway, that's fine. I mean, it's a server. It's it really just best or just stay like that, not logged in in the terminal window until you actually need in the desktop. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, top start X. The only thing was I wanted to, I just wanted, I, I ended up installing Make Desktop thinking maybe there would be some more support apps added for Pi, uh, Plymouth Boot Screen or uh, some settings, GUI settings applications that I could use because I knew there were some uh, in there. And anyway, after going around and around with it, I uh, figured out how to edit um, a file. I'll have to go back and watch that video. I can't explain it, but I, uh, uh, I can't even say the name of the file. It starts with a dot. There's a dot. It's a, it's in the root directory, and it's in the home home down directory. And that's it's not like that in Fedora 28. In a regular desktop, this is Mate desktop, but in Fedora 28, I don't have that file, period. So uh, it's set up differently. I think the server is just set up differently. So anyway, that uh, dot X whatever X a nick trick or something. Uh, edit that file, and I can change from whatever uh, desktop. There's both desktops were in there already, and I, actually there was two entries of XFCE, then Mate and XFCE. So I thought, well, that's there's no need for duplicates in there. So I took out the two duplicates and left Mate on top, and that made it the default desktop. And uh, today I'm going to see if I can figure out a graphical way to do that. There should be, there is a boot screen that comes up after you type start X. And it, it just started out with just, well, I'll just show you. I won't sit here and explain stuff out, waving my hands in the air. I'll just show you. Um, let me see. How do I want to do this? Okay. Uh, it's over there. Yeah. I'll it, okay, I'll get on the camera <coughs> and um, get over here on the KVM switch. Switch it to the to that machine. It's not. It's been running. You know. I mean, it's my server now. It, my, my red black bio store that I was using in my backup server. The one of the fans went out in it, and uh, I can't. So I had to just start using this. It was all set up and running. I just wasn't finished with it. I mean, it was set up and could be running. So anyway, um, let me log in. Let me see. I don't know if I want Dawn or Root. That's what I'm thinking about here. I'm going to go Root so that I can have full Root privileges, and then once I get it figured out, I'll, if I need to go into Dawn and do some changes, I will. Okay, so we're log fixing to be yeah logged in as root. Type start x, <clears throat> and um, 
should just uh, bring up that little graphical screen, uh, graphical win the small graphical window, and then I. Well, let's just wait and see. It almost looks like it's going to go straight into the desktop. I did make some changes before I quit. It did. Okay, so whatever changes I made, made it quit doing that. That's actually fine with me. And this is make desktop. <coughs> I guess I might not have rebooted after the last changes I made. Oh, and now I have my my, my uh, desktop. Oh, no, in Mate, it was XFCE where uh, the desktop background doesn't work in root. And I think it did at first. And it does always come up with this. It says it has a problem. I'm going to click on report to see if it shows up. What it's been doing, it says had a problem, but then it says there's zero in the problems. Yeah, it's doing that. I've seen that on all my machines once or twice. Got 29 updates. There's a lot of updates in Fedora 29. Uh, it's still pretty new. And uh, I assume that I've got my updates set to auto install and reboot if needed uh, at 3 a.m. So I assume that the two or three that was in there yesterday got installed. I guess I could look at the logs to see. But let me get um, the remote desktop app up and running. And then I can show you, really show you what I'm doing here. And it keeps wanting me to set up a key, a SSH key, and I just haven't done it. Um, let's see. I guess I could. I wasn't. So it won't. It's not saving my uh, password. Oh uh, yeah, un unattended password, and it nor it makes it. It makes a attended password. I'll say. Uh, Randomly, every time it starts, that this app restarts. It's uh, KRFB. Uh, KRFB is a GUI. Just really, it starts up to control and start up uh, Tiger VNC is what it does. Uh, server. And uh, so anyway, um, it's just not saving my password because I didn't I haven't set up that key for it it wants you to do that and I just well I wasn't sure I was I thought I might have to reformat but it looks like I'm going to be okay so um that darn camera um it looks to me like it I'm seeing the preview now and uh, it looks like it's just now where it was booting up. I'm going to watch it for a second and see how far behind it is. I think I'm going to have to try. I tried setting this tablet on. I had it on. Uh, it's it's an 8, eight uh, megapixel camera, and my phones are 5. And they actually only, send vid they only do video at 2 megapixels. So I decided that maybe, yeah, that's what it was. So all that stuff I was trying to show <laughs> didn't get shown. So, um, that sucks. All right, let me, um, I, I put it on 50% uh, to see if that would, you know, help it, uh, not as much data, but it must be some other problem. Uh, these, this Wi-Fi, sending video over Wi-Fi, it's, it's, re it, it's really convenient when you want to move your cameras around, but it is very inconvenient to have audio, audio and video syncing. <laughs> have audio, so, audio and video uh, syncing. <laughs> So um, I'm going to get on my, I've got my lapel on. I can get up and go around here and do this. I'm just going to turn off the app while well, I may reboot the thing. It's, nah, I don't know if it, the, the, the tablet needs rebooting, but since my battery died on camera three, uh, my camera two is my audio now, but I can't, I don't, I, I leave it on the selfie stick. You can see it laying there on the table, the end of the selfie stick. It's just a piece, a wooden stick that I use for that. But let me just get out of the app altogether. I'm just going to, well, let's try just, yes, restarting the app first. This one has got, everything's in a weird place. Now what? Oh, i got to log back in. Okay. Yeah, the app didn't close. This one, just because you hit the back button doesn't close the app. This tablet. You gotta go over there to that double square thing, double rectangle, and hit. Uh... Oh, no, I did set the. Yeah, on the preview, 
there, uh, uh, I went ahead and left it set to 100%. And then you can, you can do certain settings remotely in your web browser, and that's what I did. So now it's zoomed all the way out, and I have to zoom. And the only way to, the only way I know to zoom this app in is with that remote app, actually. Yeah, probably, well, you might be able to do it here. There's a, something that says actions, but that doesn't matter. It's not my goal right now to play with that thing. So let's get extra cable. Yeah, so now I'm tethered. My lapel uh, was, to, you know, I would, I was free to walk around, the, walk about the room, but now I'm tethered to, uh, to this camera laying here because I don't want to take that stick off of there because I, sometimes I want to use it for a camera. And it's really handy. That's what holds it in my mic stand, which is right here next to the, that's the mic stand. And I just, I have the power cable tethered to that and I just have it plugged into the tablet to keep it from running down. <clears throat> That's what I've been doing, but this tablet starts uh, getting behind quicker than the phones do. And it's and it's really crazy. It's not the only thing it, I don't think it's the Wi-Fi chip because it's I'm, I bet it's I'm pretty sure it's faster or at least the same as the phones because it's newer by several years and because it's an eight core tablet with four gig RAM. So it's not the power of the tablet that's, you know, at fault here. So I'm on the desktop now. Um, better double check that that's where, where I went. <laughs> While that's opening up. Yeah, I'm on the desktop. Oh, let's get off of that <clears throat> mic now. Get back on the SM58, because that's probably where I'll stay most of the video now. <clears throat> It, confu it makes it more busy and, and I have to think a lot harder about my setup when I ch have to change my setup. But um, yeah, the battery, I don't know if I said the phone three's battery is all puffed up and swelling and uh, it looks like it's about to be, it's dangerous. So I'm not using that phone anymore. Uh, let's see. So that's why I had to start using the tablet. Okay. Now I'm going to, See, now I can see the uh, can't view of the camera. It's on 99%. I'll just leave it there. And uh, for some reason, this app always does that. It never goes up to 100%. And I usually always crank it up that one more percent. But uh, I don't, I'm sure it doesn't make any visible difference. But anyway, it just bothers me that it's not there. Or it did. But I'm going to leave it because... The streaming, uh, I know there's a very noticeable difference in the picture quality when you uh, are set at, uh, and I'm going to, you know, uh, darken it a little bit so that the white part of the screen won't, uh, there we go, I think that's about right. The, when, this, when the screen's got a lot of white like it does right there, it won't, uh, you know, it won't wash out the, uh, the camera, we'll be able to handle it hopefully. So, uh. Let's see, yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll since I'm that's the only way I got to tell if my video is still making is leaving that open. Well, there might be another app I could do it with, but I like anytime I want to open a file, I want Crusader open anyway. So well, I'm gonna go ahead and close the browser because I'm not sure I'm gonna need it right now. <clears throat> and uh, okay, now uh, what was I gonna do? That threw me off completely. Um, let me get my notes. Okay, so I'm in the root. Oh, I was going to log in on the remote desktop app. And that, then I, no, I have noticed what was going on there with the. Okay, so I'll log into it. And. Um, Yeah, I had installed an application called Switch Desk, and I uninstalled it yesterday, but it might not have uh, taken effect until I rebooted, and I think I quit right after that. So that might have been, that Switch Desk might have been what was uh, showing up that little graphical. When after you started TopX, you'd get a little small graphical window, you know, and then it said default in it, and then it had a place where it said add uh, new whatever, and... Uh, I put Dawn in there thinking it was talking about users, and then later I thought, well, maybe it's talking about desktops. But uh, I found out by running this, 
the, the, you could also control that application in the terminal. So I found out in the terminal that it actually didn't support Maze Desktop. Uh, <coughs> I ran the commands and it didn't. It worked with uh, XFCE but not Maze. And it wasn't listed in this list of apps that it uh, was in the how-to part of that that app. You know the page where I found out about it. <coughs> Mate wasn't listed, so that was a clue there. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> okay, so we're on the remote desktop, and uh, <coughs> so I've got all that. I've got you know I, I've got I'm going to leave it in Mate as long as it won't, runs well enough. Uh, you know, I don't get in here on the desktop very often on my server anyway, but it's really great to have it when you need it to admin something or say when this is going to be out in the garage. Well, if I'm in the garage, it's already up and running, already online. All I've got to do is type start X, log in, and, uh, or log in, type start X, and then I can look stuff up on the Internet and stuff you know, So uh, when I'm out there. So that will be real con you know, be convenient. I always have a got several machines out there. I always have one ready to go. So, and I've only got one monitor. I used to have two, but one of them started uh, smoking. <laughs> so I decided it was too dangerous to use. See our old CRT monitors. And um, um, so, you know, it's a, you can unplug the cables and put them in other machines, but it's kind of a pain. So, so if this is one has a graphic user interface, then uh, I'll have something to use out there. Plus, it's easier to do a lot of admin, you know, a lot of tasks that you might need to do with the graphic user interface. So, um, let's see if I can read this. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. And, uh, oh, yeah, I want to check that kernel that wasn't working right. Yeah, as far as Plymouth showing up, let me see. There was something else I had in my head about maybe why. Oh, those commands I ran to try to fix the Plymouth boot screen and make it act normally, I think I had that other app in there which had actually moved to con that configuration file I was talking about over to its folder. So what I had done yesterday is moved it back to the root folder and the Dawn folder. And because uh, it was in both uh, home directories, and uh, uninstalled that app so it wouldn't cause any trouble. And then there was these commands I had ran, and I think it was I, don't, I can't remember for sure, but I think it was after I installed that uh, switch desk is what it's called. Um, and it did work; it just didn't work for Mate Desktop. Um, I ran these commands, okay, and so maybe I should try running them again because it was saying in this uh, post that I found that uh, with a, this is an older machine, you know, with a regular BIOS. They're saying with, they call it legacy BIOS now. they say saying a machine's legacy BIOS might not work, and if and it showed some commands to run. And uh, I ran them, and they showed to work. But the files weren't in the right places and everything. So I'm wondering if maybe, I don't know, I get a little scared of what if I'd break something else, you know, because it is working just fine the way it is. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, I'll think about that as I go. Because it is not necessary. The only thing I would gain is uh, it being booted up to a, a graphical window instead of uh, a terminal window. Actually, I'm getting to where I kind of like it in the terminal window because that way there's no graphics running to use up memory and, and processing power until I actually want to use it. You know, I'm going to leave it like it is. I, there's no need for that. And, that. and it may just be that there's a lot more needs to be done because... Fedora has obviously thought, you know, if you're running the server, you don't need a graphical anything. <laughs> and you don't really, but uh, I want it. So, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to leave it as it is. All right, now, um, the broken kernel. Okay, let's see if that kernel works. And then what's the other thing? Check, check desktop. I think it says j j tech j check desktop backs <laughs> backgrounds and root and dawn. Uh, oh, oh! Now I've got the some of the result. Mate works now. Yeah, set to default. Oh, I was wondering if there was a graphical way to 
to change desktops. That's one thing I would like to have because now and right now to change graph. That's the one thing about good about having that log on screen is that allows you to just change desktops, you know, real quick and easy. Otherwise, I have to go in and uh, uh, edit that dot x x and x, x and x, or however you say that name file. Wow. Oh, okay. Now I'm back to the other other camp. Uh, and I guess that I was worried about that extra dawn. Anyway, I was talking. Yeah. So. so some of that work got done just by uninstalling that uh, switch disk app. Now I don't have that little GUI that had default and dawn in there. I added that dawn and it didn't do anything except for just confuse me. It was no different. I still lock. What happens is whatever uh, if you you start in the console, you log in either to root or, or dawn. All, all two users I have, and then you type start x and it puts you into the GUI. You know the graph uh, the desk, gra graphic desktop of whichever user that you've logged in as. So. That uh, I think maybe that um, manual editing section of adding a the default meant not user, but uh, default meant default desktop. I think is what it meant, and so I, I could have, of course, if I'd have typed made it still wouldn't have worked. Now I probably could have typed XFCE in there, but it wouldn't help because it, the default was XFCE at the time, you know. So, um, well, I guess you could have used it. I guess you could have had default be made, and then if you could type. XFCE, then you can get into XFCE that way. But it's still kind of back around the corner, you know, right around the way. Anyway, yeah, I don't really want an app that only half halfway functions. So um, those commands that I have. Okay, so I need to get over in my web browser. I could do it in here, but I don't have. Uh, I've got all my bookmarks over here in my web browser, so I think it'll be quicker to do that and uh, check all the resources here. And once it gets booted up, it should be all right. I mean, opened up. Okay, now. <sighs> got a couple of couple of things that aren't in the folders it looks like oh no I was just in a folder that had that in it I guess okay uh, Fedora 29 net stop log into the desktop my mouse boot screen okay let's see I'm really not sure which one is the one <clears throat> that has those commands. I may have gotten lucky here and hit it. I think I did. Okay, this is it. Okay, now. Um, could do a remote terminal, but I think... I keep thinking, you know, mostly I usually use that little s small remote terminal in the cockpit remote admin app, but you can log in to a remote terminal. You can log in remotely as long as it's serving up on the machine and it is into any most any terminal app then i can have so i was having i wanted to save my my output and i wasn't wasn't allowing me to save just a few lines so i thought why don't i open up any terminal like the one i like you know and do that but i have to go look up the commands because i don't know them but actually i've got a remote desktop going here so i'm just gonna copy the command i want right here i'll say what i'm okay so um well, let's see. <clears throat> well, prob you're not getting the Plymouth boot screen. That's what this whole thing is about. And they have they go back and forth. It's a good post. Uh, this is on uh, askfedoraproject.org. Plymouth broken on refresh on a fresh install. Why? <clears throat> so if you're interested in that, you can go there and <clears throat> you know look over that post. Uh, of course, if you just start Google searching, you'll probably end up finding it. But uh, well, it depends on what you put in. But anyway, um, okay. Here's the thing. The, uh, try this and see if it helps the Plymouth <clears throat> or maybe Plymouth. I, again, I keep feeling funny now that I say Pl I've always said Plymouth for years now because when I originally discovered this before Fedora started using it as an alternative, it was an, an alternative boot screen project or boot GUI project. Um, they had a they had a like an icon or a you know a mascot icon and it was this giant mouth that was you know real funny looking thing 
multicolor thing. And so I, I've thought, and I, I've always thought you were supposed to call it Plymouth. And I think maybe it, I think maybe it probably told you to, you know, actually showed you the, uh, wrote it out for you the way they wanted you to say it. But anyway, that's why I call it Plymouth, even though it's spelled Plymouth. Uh, I couldn't be wrong. I might be remembering the wrong thing. But uh, anyway, try uh, this and see if it helps. Um, the Plymouth themes may have issues if the 16-bit Linux loader runs. The commands shown here remove the 16 from the load commands. This works for legacy BIOS MBR systems. Uh, and that's exactly what that is. It has a legacy BIOS master boot uses a master boot record on the hard drive. It BRs for master boot record. <clears throat> and if you if you uh, boot EFI, uh, check the Grub manual for you know what to do. So um, I've already run this once and it didn't seem to do anything. But then I realized yesterday, well, I had installed that. Uh, switch disk app which moved that main uh, file and um, I'll show the file so that it won't sound so ridiculous I'll show that first let's just go in here <clears throat> it's right in your home directory of your whichever user you're in um, okay so here we are in roots home directory and it's a dot x this is it docs dot X I N I T R C. I think if you double click on it, it'll just open up in this the system here. If not, I'll have to right click and open. Yeah, there we go. Now see, here we go. I find, what I had figured out yesterday was that uh, you know Mate was a uh, well, it had two entries of X F C E four on the top of Mate, and so I deleted those and but put Mate on the top, and now it's the default desktop. But you know, I don't want to. If I can get away from having to manually do that, that's a real not hard, but it's definitely way more trouble than just clicking on something in the boot in the welcome screen, you know. So let's see if we can get something to fix that. So um, again, let me triple check. Sometimes I switch around, you know, to cameras and things and forget where I'm at, what I'm showing. I did it yesterday for a while. Okay, so we're in a root user. Oh, it doesn't show what user I'm using, but I am root user. Uh, I remember what I remember that much because I logged in as root. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, full screen so whatever comes out, I'll be able to read it all. And uh, right click doesn't seem to work. Oh, it's slow in this remote desktop. Okay, now pasting that first part of that command. Oh, the. Uh, so it's uh, it's asking me a question. So what I'm going to do then, instead of it's not fitting the screen perfectly. Let's see if I can just make it big, but not giant, but not you know so big. That'll be big enough. Now, um, oh, etc. Grub, G10 Linux. Oh, I back those up before I did this the first time. Yeah, okay. Overwrite root DGC grub 10 Linux original. Oh. Let's go back that one up too. Okay, root etc grub 10 Linux original. Root etc grub. Where's my. I've been using XFC and it's got me lost here. Well, let's just put it. Leave it like that. I like to work in the. But extra uh, separate desktops but in this case I think because I'm gonna have to keep coming back root etc grub to 10 Linux original okay I'm gonna copy this over to uh, my backup folder that you know make a backup of it okay now I like twin panel fire managers and this one will make twin panels if you do that up to view and select extra pain because it's an extra pain to me to use a single panel file manager okay root documents now what's the file I want 
I need root etc grub 10 original. Okay. Well, not root. Well, the root is a system. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, it is in root. Yeah, it's in root. Okay. There it is right there. Not so hard to. Well, that, that folder never opened up. It not working because I'm not clicking on the folder icon. Yep, <laughs> it's what it was. There, now we go. Oh, I've got one of those exonitric backup files in the just in the documents folder. Let's rename that to backup or to back or whatever. I usually just put BK on the front of backup files, but well, it was just because I was making a video, I uh, I did it like that. Actually, I think I've got another one in there, so let's. Do that. At least. Uh, let's see if I can drag that in there. There. Bit slow to refresh the screen on there, but. Uh, Yes, they already had another one. Well, that was the one with switch disk, so, okay, yeah. Okay, now this one, I'm going to copy it. Uh, you, you don't, when you don't know for sure what's going to happen, you don't want to not be able to get back to where you started. So, copy to other pane. And, uh, there it is. Let's modify, put that modified on the top, and then we'll... There we go. See how much difference it is to have a graphic user interface. Try to do all this in the command line in a hurry. Well, if you're if you're a terminal command line guru, then yeah, you could, but most of us aren't. NF list text. Let's see if we go on a grub CFG. 10 Linux shell script. I'm going to put back in front of that one. I don't want to, see, that's a script. I don't want to accidentally run that just by clicking on it. I might anyway, but <laughs> trying to open it up. But uh, yeah, those two are the only ones that are scripts. Okay. Grub CFG, I'm going to leave it like it is because I know what Grub CFG is pretty by heart. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so I guess I'll have to put Y for yes and hit enter. Okay, now. So that's done. Um, and I've got to get back over here on my... Now you've got to run this. Let's see, what's it going to be doing to this? Is there any files I can... Oh, this is going to edit this file. What file is it? Oh, 10 Linux. Okay, so I have 10 Linux. Let's go see what's in that file. ETC grub D 10 Linux. That's what that was. Let's go see what's in that file. That's a script. So we'll right click. We won't double click on it. We'll right click. So we don't want to run it. We just want to open it with. Open with other. Uh, we want to open it with a text editor or just I've uh, made you know that's a video oh no don't remember that watch that in this darn KJ uh, and, and other single panel or file managers you better watch that it will default to remember this and then then it'll never then it'll never want to run scripts again like if you want next time you wanted to run a script you couldn't now there's a pluma is a text editor so i just want to look at it um this you know i don't want it to change the uh, default settings for a script usually i run scripts in the command line so that i can see what's happening get the readout <coughs> i'm going to turn the monitor on and off and that way it should uh center back up oh that must be the remote desktop not centered 
Because, yeah, I'm on my machine. Yeah, the rest of them are all in good shape. It's just that, no, it's a little bit off. It didn't work. Sometimes that happens. It just gets stuck and don't want to center up. Sometimes it helps to go to another machine and come back. <coughs> that centered good on that one. <coughs> I'm using my KVM switch to switch back and forth. It's really bugging me, so it's, I'm going to have to try to fix it. Let's see. Okay, that's much better. All right, so ETC Grub D 10 Linux. All right. Now, this is the file Grub Make Config Helper Script. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. So this is to um, update Grub that or make the Grub Config file. That's this is a script to make your Grub Config. File. So, oh, let's look in there one more time. I just re realized something. Now it's, uh, it sees uh, that you could open it with, uh, maybe it already did say open office, but uh, uh, it'll be all right. I just don't want to, I don't know how much this machine it can do, you know, how much. <clears throat> See if it'll open up in the other workspace getting too many things in that workspace from not liking <laughs> probably opened up in the other one because I didn't do it very quick there it is it's working <clears throat> well that's uh, finishing opening up <clears throat> what is it I want to look for already forgot I'm gonna move this it's, just, it's starting to really feel jumbled up now um, CPU overwrite root ETC grub 10 Linux original yeah okay it's okay I didn't do the other command yet I was just looking to see what was gonna happen all right got it and that's on my machine. Okay, <clears throat> I keep doing that because it's I get I get confused about. Uh, so said is going to okay sixteen bit s i x t e n b i t. I think what it's going to do is turn it off. That's what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so it's going to be turning off the sixteen bit. Yeah, see if I don't. Uh, if I don't make it full screen, then I, I get confused about where to click. Okay. Now, I looked in this file before and couldn't find a single reference to 16 bit. And it's the same case here 16. Let's just type 6 just to see if. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not in there, so I don't understand. Then uh, on it. That's not on that machine. It's on this machine. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and run it because I want to see if it will fix it. Yeah, this happened the last time too. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this backup of the file. That is, oh, that's my backup, isn't it? Let's close that. Let's go try to find the Z file. And so that I won't have to keep going in circles, I'm going to paste that in there, but I won't hit enter yet. So etc grub d etc grub d 
10 Linux. Let's go see if it's in there. ETC Grub D10 Linux. Okay. ETC. Ah, moved the wrong one, the one I didn't want to move. You have to click in the one that you want to be in. Yeah, I want to be there. Okay, I wanted to leave that. I wanted to go over to the left side. And I want to go to ETC. As soon as that gets to the file system there. Is that a typer grunt? You're supposed to be able to... There it is. Typing didn't go... I wanted it to go for some reason. You should be able to do that in there, but I guess it wasn't wasn't uh, Grub D. That time it worked. Ten Linux. There it is. Let's go ahead and back this one up too. Ten Linux. We'll back it up and then we'll copy the other pane. Then I'm going to rename that one to backup. I guess we got to do something different. Well, I'll just say uh, back one and back two. That would make more sense. And I'm going to rename it because in case I, you know, accidentally made a chain, I wouldn't want it to somehow. Uh, it shouldn't because you're opening it up from the other folder, but I wouldn't want it to mess up that other file. Let's get off of that. I'll just get out of that directory so that I can't mess things up there. That's your, all your system, bunch of your system configuration files. You don't want to mess them up. I'm going to go to downloads or something. Just something to get out of there. <clears throat> yeah, my uh, remote desktop is not really happy, is it? Either that or... Well, I don't have that many apps open, so I don't think it's the system. Still hasn't gone to the downloads folder like it doesn't want to. I don't think it's the, uh, <clears throat> it could be the uh, remote desktop. Let's get out of remote desktop and log back in and see if that helps. It may just be not, it may be doing what I want it to do, it just may not be showing me that. It's been a little, yeah, that's what it was. It's been a little laggy, uh, last, you know, late, last few times I've used it, but not, uh, not that bad. Okay, now let's uh, Monday, January twenty one. I'm wondering about something here. Thursday, October twenty eighteen. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have new on the top like I like to do that. Okay, now then, let's open with. Um, well, it's just that's simple to do that, so I'll do that. I think it already opened up LibreOffice over in the other other workspace. <clears throat> okay. I probably that's a heavier use use resource usage app than like that Pluma text editor. So now then, see if uh, no, now it's there is no reference to sixteen in here. If you click on find all doesn't find anything so I don't really quite get it but now I have two backups of that file so if something stops working I'll have a way to okay said IDE IE so and so so and so let's go double check our 
command that we're running. Okay, yeah. Okay. I know this is painstakingly slow, but, well, that's the way my mind works. <clears throat> okay, work <laughs> quick, faster than you can look away, and it's done. So it says it did it, and, uh, you know, if we really want to know what's going on, I guess we should go look at that file. Uh, oh, it, well, it's, from what I gather, it's taking out that reference to 16. But even my, my backup, my original backup, didn't have 16 in it. And I searched before. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do the rest of it because I don't think we're going to see anything new. Uh, we got backups so that we can get back. Now we're going to run grub to make config, which makes a conf, grub config file. And it's telling it where to go. Normally you can just run grub to make config, period. But, well, you, I saw another post about fixing that, uh, and see, that should fix that, uh, that should fix that uh, broken, but the kernel's not actually broken, I know, because I ran a check and there was no broken applications on the system, period. <clears throat> but uh, <coughs> it still wouldn't boot after I ran this last time, I don't think, if I remember right. I'm having trouble remembering all, everything I've done. So, um I have a grub config file right there. It's a very large file, so I'm not going to open it. Um, I'll leave that open while I'm doing this. Okay, so what we'll have to do after we run this command is reboot. But what I can do is save all this. See, it shows you it's generating, uh, it's seeing the kernels. And seeing the uh, INET frams files, VM Linux, Linux, uh, it sees them all and it's put them all in there according to how they should be in there. But <laughs> that's what I know about it. Okay, so that was all successful. But there's a kernel right there 419, uh, 15, 419, 15. Well, that's 300, that's 300. What's the difference here? Those are the same 419, 15, 300, 329, 64. And then 4.19.7, 4.19.6, So that's three kernels, just like, uh, just like it was before. Let's see, uh, some of these, yeah, you can't save output as, so you have to select all, copy, and now, let's see, I'm going to close this extra program here. And open up. Uh, I don't have. Uh, there we go. Let's put Office up there. There we go. It's got a different icon than what I'm used to. I've got I've got all these backup files and everything scattered all over this thing now. Normally I do all my work in a, my regular user, but I've been doing a lot of stuff in in root user. Let's see. Need something to tell me what that is. I just real remember now that I saved what I did last time is this. I'll just do that. Uh, just pasted that whole thing in there so I would really know what's going on.
I'll go down here and get some of this. Uh, That'll tell me right there. I miss part of it, but I'll 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 miss part of the word themes, but I'll put it back in there. Themes, there we go. That ought to be enough. Alright, now. Uh, I accidentally hit F12 and it put a 1 in front of that. So there you go. If you ever wondered uh, what F12 would do in, inside of <laughs> inside of Open Office, that's what it does. Okay. <clears throat> now all the icons are different. I couldn't even figure out which one was to save as. But I can always read the words. That's going to be the probably the second time. Well, I might have done it in Dawn before the other. The <clears throat> okay. So, uh, as soon as that gets saved. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a pretty uh, good, a lot of information. I mean, this is one of those posts, you know, forum posts, but it's a lot of good information, not just a bunch of extraneous junk. So it's worth just saving the whole thing. <clears throat> now, what we have to do is uh, reboot. So I'm going to get on the camera so that we can show that. And... Uh, do that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, that uh, that uh, update thing is showing that they're available. They're not being installed, so we're not hurting anything there. I was thinking about that for a second. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> we'll reboot it, and we'll just go right back into root again and see. Still have my theme that I put on there. The uh, spiral something. Uh, the uh, if you're seeing three dots, uh, the, the crux of that top part of that message that I just saved, uh, the post, all those posts, is they were wondering why the theme wasn't working, and they were just seeing three dots. And I was seeing the same thing. That's what hit a struck a chord with me. So uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna let it boot like normal. And um, as I got on down, you know, it really opened up into all a whole, not even anywhere close to what uh, I, I was expecting it to get to, you know. And, and yeah, okay, I had completely forgotten that. I was saying, well, maybe Fedora 29 just doesn't support the Plymouth graphic user, chooser, you know. I mean, uh, desktop chooser and login, user chooser and desktop chooser. Uh, but it may actually be because it doesn't support this old bio it i don't see why it wouldn't i mean everything fedora 28 well i haven't put well i put fedora 28 on this net pro max well but i didn't try to get the graphic user i had that on there first and i worked on for a month or two trying to get uh, getting a dnf dns servers up and running and then ran into uh, after the end of all that i got i ran at the roadblock that in order to register it with uh, GoDaddy, you have to have two separate external IP addresses. Well, there's no way I can get two external IP addresses with my, you know, ISP. So I had it up and running, but I wasn't ever 100% sure if it was going to work online. I couldn't get to find that out. Okay, logged in as root. 
Do start X again. Now let's see what we get. Last time it went straight into the main desktop. Didn't stop along the way. I think it's going to do the same thing. When you see that little arrow, your mouse arrow, that usually means you're almost to your desktop. And especially when you see the spinning ball after that. Yep. Well, I'm not going to worry about it anymore then. That is good enough. Uh, if I want to change back to the XFCE desktop, I will have to go back, either remember how to do it or go back through all my note videos and my notes to, <laughs> to see what I, file I have to edit and all that stuff. <clears throat> After a while, I probably will not remember that. I don't know what, sometimes you get those uh, oddball error messages and then they go away. You know, it's a bug and they go away after they get fixed. So, <clears throat> all right. So, um, yeah, I made sure I turned I did uh, before I had uh, the remote desktop app, KRFB running, you know, set to start up. But last thing you want really is that to be, to forget and leave that set to start up in the root user on a server. Yeah, there's still, tw there's 29 updates there. Yeah, so I really don't want it to, uh, right now I don't even, it doesn't bother me that it's not, that I keep having to put that password in there because that way I can't accidentally forget, leave it on. My, when I had my Fedora 23 system, I didn't even install a remote desktop app at all because uh, it was plugged into my KVM switch like the Net Max is right now, and that's the way I left it, but... That uh, IBM was real quiet. It made heat, but not well. It made more than I thought. I finally realized once I didn't have one in there. I had to, I put it out in the garage for a couple months, uh, and was just going to leave it there. And uh, it was two or three months, and then uh, the power went out over and over one night and broke the operating system, it, um, and I uh, was not able to fix it. So then that's when I started. I decided to switch to this machine because that one was. The reason I put it out there is because the fans had started acting up and getting loud, and uh, I don't remember if I ever replaced one or what I did, but I think I replaced one and it was still it was better, but not it's still too loud for me. So uh, I didn't buy a new one; I just used what I had. And anyway, I decided, you know what, I got a faster machine, and the, I wanted a 64-bit machine. I'd been wanting one for a long. That was a 32-bit machine. This is 64-bit because there were some apps that I was kind of wanting to try out. And it uh, looks like we're still behind on our, I just realized, I, I for, realized I forgot to switch to the desktop or anything. Oh, I forgot to disconnect that last time, I guess. It's, so it, when I rebooted it, when I rebooted it, disconnected it. Okay, so um, let's go over here and close some of the, this extra web browser until I need it again. I got to watch my resource usage on my machine I'm streaming from too. Okay, now back on uh, in the root as a root user on my desktop. Let me look at my notes again. Commands to fix okay, really what <laughs> Really, what I want to do now is check that uh, other kernel, the one that's not wasn't booting, and see if it's not if 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 that can be fixed easily enough, or if it's already fixed. That's what I need to do now. See if it's fixed by that uh, uh, running make grub make config because there was two commands. One of them was running grub make config. The other one was something else. Uh, I won't even go to that if it's fixed. So <laughs> I'm really not. Ready to be logged in on a remote desktop? I don't think. I think I just need to reboot it again. Let me see what else. Desktop. <clears throat> yeah, I think the only other thing was the desktop backgrounds, and they, I don't think they're. I think in root in XFCE it's still not working, but in Dawn it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I'm not going to worry about that. That's a kind of a minor thing. <clears throat> I was afraid it was a symptom of a bigger problem, but. Since it's working everywhere but in root, it's probably just probably just a bug. Uh, 
I think it was working originally. So, um, let me look at my note one more time, see if I've skipped anything else. I do want to back up all this stuff I have on there. It's one way or the other. Um, I guess I can just plug in an, uh, plug in one of my, my little USB sticks in there. I guess this would be the easiest thing to do. I think I'll um, let's see. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna do that while it's in root while it's in the root user mode. Let's see. <clears throat> Got the 32 gigabyte SD card in my USB adapter that came out of my phone 3. Uh, it's formatted FAT32, so it shouldn't be a problem just to copy to, copy them to it. Let me, uh, I'll just plug it up here. to get in there to do that. It's off on the side instead of on the front. mount up it should just mount up this is mate desktop so I think XFCE may not even mount them up automatically but mate does I open up the file man browser and see if it sees that driver at all it may just be taking longer than I expect I, that darn uh, adapter is cracked the plastic uh, yeah it's mounted it's cracked and uh, <clears throat> it'll let you plug it in backwards <laughs> and it doesn't do anything except for not work and I was kind of having a little trouble getting the you know getting it in there and I thought oh, oh did I mess up okay so um, extra now I'm going to click on the 32 gigabyte volume oh actually I wanted it let's see which side it comes up on it doesn't really matter I just like to I like to move from the left to the right generally with this particular app but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I've got a documents folder in there, so just put it in there. Yep. And all I put everything in a folder, so yeah, I've got it all in that folder. So I can just copy that folder over. While it's working, I want to check my, yeah, check what I'm showing you. Okay, so we got that. Should have that. I think those are going to be root privileges, though. Let, let's uh, check that. Let's see if we see if it says root privileges. I'm going to change it to. Uh, I mean, yeah, root name and root, you know, root only and all that. Permissions, let's see. Yeah, it's root. File access says nothing. I don't know if I want to change it from root or give it. It's usually better. Well, it's different. See, this is, I don't know if it matters. Let's leave it as it is because. If I change it to Dawn, it's not the same system. You know, I use, I always like to use... It actually does seem to work or most of the time. Uh, well, if I put this back in the phone, that's when I might have a problem. But I, 
I don't well, I don't know if I'm going to get to do that or not. Uh, the battery is, you know, bad on it. And the battery costs more than the phone did <laughs> in the first place. But um, not outrageous. It's $16. I paid $15 for the phones originally. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> Oh, oh, excess files. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Need to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem to know how to. Oh, you know what? I don't think it's going to let me do it. Yeah, it's not going to let me do it. So probably it will turn out when I put this in my machine, it will be read and, read and write. Everything will be cool. Because since I can't access the permissions from here, that means the, the little SD card is controlling the permissions. It's not allowing the machine that I got them from to control the permissions. It's actually what I want. So let's go on that side. I don't think I have any other files. I don't want my. I do have those downloads. I think. I think I downloaded my. Well, my music files. Yeah. I do have some screenshots. I think. Yeah, I got screenshots, but I think. There's a pictures folder. On here. So I'll put them in the pictures folder. Maybe wishing I made a, fol a folder just for that this machine, though, because it's going to be mixed with my... There we go. You have to click on the folder. You can't click on the word. Yeah, there's screenshots in there. Uh, it's going to end up... Those would be screenshots for the phone, well, made on the phone. There shouldn't be anything in there but the, except for the phone let's see what's in there yep phone screenshots there's three of them three or four of them okay yeah so that's going to end up being uh, not so great Okay, so I um, <clears throat> think what I should probably do, let's just put it all in documents and I'll make a folder for it. Ah, well, that's a good enough folder for door 29 server info. And then I'll just uh, copy that over. to the other pane so I'll just go through and do everything like that <clears throat> that'll work now there's no videos anything like that yeah I don't want to do anything to kind of give trouble on this drive here this little SD card because uh, uh, I might end up putting it back in the phone I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I, I'm thinking I don't want to spend money I, I I've got three of these phones, and so I think the phone one battery may be a little bit swollen. They're both, the batteries are both working just fine, but I know when they start swelling up, they can be end up being dangerous. They can even catch on fire. So, um, I don't want no part of that. <clears throat> so, um, And I don't want to buy three of those batteries. And I was looking, I found, I found them in the America. I found them as cheap as twelve dollars. The kind that same same specs, but it's, but I would have to uh, pull the BMS off of that old battery and solder the uh, the wires coming out of the new battery to it. They have a little plug on them, a two 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 prong, you know, two female connectors. I mean, it's a, in a single connector, but that I, you know, I could do, but well, I don't know, that's a lot of work for saving a few bucks, <clears throat> and especially, and a little bit of risk, you know, messing with the battery, those things can 
uh, if I accidentally poked in there and, and shorted it out, then, uh, you know, just catch on. It, it just burst into flames, you know. So lithium, lithium uh, li lipolymer batteries, lithium polymer batteries can be really dangerous. So um, that's what I see in, I've read and what I've seen in videos for all these years. I've never messed with one, actually, as far as taking it apart or anything. <clears throat> but... Um, Okay, so I backed that up from the root directory. So now I want to let's go ahead and disconnect. I'm gonna close that for now. Now I'm gonna go reboot. Um, already, I want to back that stuff up. I want. I do want to check that other kernel. So I'll do that. Now, there's no boot stuff on this USB stick, so I can leave it in there. Okay, I'm thinking out loud here. Okay, so, now. <clears throat> yeah, if I was using one of them, something that had some live Linux distros on it, then it would boot to that instead of the operating system. Oh yeah, I gotta remember my server goes down every time I reboot, so I'm trying not to do it anymore than I have to. Uh, scammers are calling. They call all day, every day. Hardly ever get a call it's not from anybody we know. It's always scammers trying to scam something. Phone's blinking, and it bugs me when it's blinking. Right now it's answering, but but then if they leave a message, if that if the if the uh, Robocaller leaves a message, then it sits there and blinks until you listen to it. I don't have the ringer turned on in here. No way. <laughs> I want to hear that crap. Okay. Oh, hurry. Now, I want to go ahead and try that right now while I'm thinking about it. That's the kernel that was broken. Let's see what happens. Yep, it's still broken. So I, might, I would kind of like to look into either fixing it yeah, I'll look into fixing it, or let's see, I already did that, I think. I think I'm exhausted my options on fixing it. But there are commands to uh, delete old kernels. As long as I do that right, I didn't hit there. It didn't hit the... didn't take... <clears throat> Uh, so I might delete that kernel because um, because I don't like it being there, not knowing it doesn't work. I don't know. Um, I do want to make sure I have a backup kernel though. Next update. What they do is it, they keep the, it automatically keeps three. Well, it keeps up. I think up to three kernels plus the rescue. The bottom one's a rescue mode. <coughs> um, and um, I just wonder if to just flat deleting it, if it will it throw that off and make it uh, uh, lose that oldest one, the first kernel. Then I wouldn't have a backup kernel. I don't know. <laughs> never done. It. Had never had to do that before. So I don't think I've ever had. I've seen the commands o over the years, but I've never had to do it. Never. You know, wanted to. Some people don't want the extra ones in there. They think it's clutter or something. But well, when you got something, when your kernel something gets broken, you can't boot into that kernel. I have had that happen and had to fall back. I've had to have fall back as far back as the third one. You know, two of them were broke. Um, so I always keep them. Matter of fact, I think there was a way back in the older the fedoras that you could keep four or more. I used, to, I think, I used to keep four. I think what I did was turn off the automatic purging and just manually um, what you would do to delete them. Now, see, there's you can take them out of grub so that they just don't show up. And so that's what I would do if I didn't want them to show up. I'd take them out of grub. But I made, I made them all stay up to about four. Um, but what I'm talking about is actually deleting that kernel. But then again, you know, let's see if this was grub one, I would know how to go in there and delete that entry and then run great grub update. Uh, and uh, then it should, if, you know, if there's nothing wrong with the kernel or anything, which I don't believe there is, then it would work. Yeah. And 
So the, the, the idea I get is they think it's a, bro, a bug and grub, not a broken kernel. So I'm going to log in as Don. Just remember that. Ah, I keep hitting t tab or something over there instead of enter. I don't know why. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, now we're logged in as Dawn. <clears throat> I think my efforts to show and tell what's going on with the camera may be in vain. I'm afraid that camera is still too far behind. And I don't know why it's doing that. <clears throat> I guess what I'm going to have to do, I think I'm going to have better luck. <clears throat> with my phones than I do with the tablet, so I wanted to get this server finished and out in the garage before I fiddle around with trying to fix. See, I can't stream. I can only record videos with OBS because something went wrong with that. I think it's when I added when when my phone battery died and I added the phone two entries to use it as a the audio entries. I think that's when it that's when it went wrong, and so I need to go back. And rework all of my scenes, and that's going to take some real time, like a day or two, maybe. Uh, but anyway, what I can do is use use phone one for audio and phone two for video, because it's the one that's ready to mount into my mic stand behind me. That's what I do with it. Okay, so I've got my SD card there, and uh, we're in as dawn. So yeah, it goes straight into uh, Make Desktop. Yeah, now I can see user done right there. When I, I just thought of that, whenever you open up the file manager, it oh wait, this one, this KJ, it opens up to your home directory. So I can see right there that uh, I'm. Uh, oh, I haven't ever set the uh, folders to the way I like them. There, <clears throat> I'll leave it alone right now. Okay, so. This one I want to go into documents. You got to click on the side you want to change and then do that. Okay, now, now here's where. Oh, this is on my little uh, SD card. Now, Fedora, Fedora 29 server info. See, I, I had named those the exact same thing. Now, I think. Well, they shouldn't have any duplicate file names. We'll see. That's the thing I'm wondering what's going to happen there. With Crusader, I know exactly how to do my syncing and everything. Okay. Let's see. We'll just say copy to other panes. See what it says. Yeah, it just worked. So they didn't have any duplicate file names. So we're good there. Now, let's go to uh, pictures because I'm sure I have some screenshots. And I'm just going to put the screenshots. Make sure and open up the folder so I don't accidentally get what I don't want. Now, if these have any of the same names, I'll be in trouble, but they probably won't. Copy two. Okay, now. Oops, wasn't on the side I thought it was on, but that's all right. All right, now, I'm still staying in that backup folder. I don't think there's anything else at all. Ah, see, it never, this one just, uh, when you go over here to click to the, uh, you know, what folder you want to go in, I always forget to first click in the window that you want to do it in. I, and it's kind of funny because just because of the way the layout is uh, in Crusader, you have to do the same thing, but I'm used to that. <laughs> okay. Um, already done the documents. There's not any downloads, I don't think. And I know there's not any music. I'm just looking anyway just to make sure. Okay. And then pictures. Okay. So, um... 
I guess I actually forgot to uh, get off the camera, didn't I? <clears throat> so, uh, whatever I'm in, I'm not, yeah, I'm not in remote desktop, okay. So I forgot to get off the camera, and you may not ever see what I, everything I did there. But you do. Uh, what happens is you hear the audio, but it's seeing something different. So, all right, yeah. Go look on my machine for the email with the commands to fix Grub. Well, I was just well. I know it's broken still. So there is another command that might fix that kernel not working right. So I'll go get back on my machine. <coughs> Oh, first, let's open up the remote desktop app so that I can act KRFB so I can actually show that the, the, the good way. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so, um, the mouse is not working. I'm on the machine, but the mouse ain't working. Sometimes it does that. I have to go back to another machine that's actually, let me get the mouse working on that, and then go back to the one you want it to work on. And that's just the way my tired old KVM switch does me sometimes. All right, um... It's over 10 years old now. Let's see, no, it's way over 10 years old, I think. It would have been 10 years old in about 2011, I think. Okay, so. Um, remote. Get that up and going. Okay, now we're in his dawn over there. Now I'm gonna have to get in my oh I gotta get in my email to find that. Do I have to get in my email to find that? Yeah. I don't know that I have it. Well let's look in my folders and see if I've saved it into a document. Okay. Fixing plymouth bootloader, terminal commands. Yeah, I didn't ever save it, it doesn't look like. Grub, that's what I'm looking for here. I don't see anything about... I can search. Yeah, it's not in there. Okay. <clears throat> so, we'll go ahead and open up... Um, Thunderbird, so I can find that email I sent to myself. It's probably, I'm sure it's in my bookmarks, but well, maybe I could have found it. I've already opened up the email now, so I guess I'll look in there first. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, yeah, up down robots telling me my site's been up and down because I've been rebooting the machine like crazy. And, uh, try just searching for grub and see. Okay, that's the one I've just been going by. Now then, try this. Oh, here's the commands right here. Grub to make config, which I just got through running. I just did it the whole exactly pointed straight to the actual grub config file. And then or tuned ADM profile custom power save fixes the grub config again. I don't understand that. Tuned ADM power file custom power save. I don't want it in power save. Huh. Well, let's uh, save this into my 
Fedora 29 folder. All right. I'll just save these, make sure I've got every one of these in there. And then uh, reset a lost password in under five minutes. That's for sent OS. That was, uh, well, it's Fedora. That looks like it would be pretty helpful. And since I didn't even remember I had sent that to myself. I think I'll save it not in that folder, but in uh, Linux command. That's probably what it's going to be. It's commands look to me like. Okay, so found it, but I don't know if I want to use it. <laughs> All right, let's get out of Thunderbird. All right. Um, well, now I'm in DOM, but that's okay. Uh, if I was in root user then I could go into any folder I want um, yeah let's use um, Thunar oh let's see search for files that's gotten out of order They're supposed to be that one on the left and the app finder on the right. But I just realized what I really want is to open up the terminal. Since I'm in Dawn, I'm gonna I want to open up Thunar as 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 root user. So I gotta do SU to get root privileges. Thunar, file manager. Now I'll be running it as root user and it'll say, warning, you can damage your system. Warning, Earl Robinson. Now I guess I'm in desktop and audio's working. All right, I just want to make sure before I continue. All right, now what I want to do is look in, uh, I need to get that, uh, let's get this out of here now. I'm going to, Eject my little S, little SD card. It's an SD card and a USB adapter. So that way I can't, you know, mess anything up with it. I've already taken that out. Let me get a drink here. <clears throat> I'm getting to where I'm going to need a break, but I hate to stop when I'm on a roll, too. So, I'm okay, so that command, I found it. Now that I see what it says, I don't see how a power saver command could fix a kernel not booting. Doesn't make sense at all. Well, I think what it was saying is it's just going to make uh, it was just an alternate way to backdoor way to get grub to up grub to update. But it's been updated three times now, I think, and that's not fixing it. So I want to go into the boot folder, and I want to look at those kernels and see if uh, tells them where I can detail. And see, I can see the sizes of them. I want to see if uh, 
I really can't remember which files are the actual kernel files, but I want to see if anything looks like really odd, like one of them's really small or zero bytes or something. Yeah, they're all the same size. Those are, yeah, rescue, 419, 6, 7, and 15. 7 is the one I believe is broken, but see, there's also INET frams, uh, which is... Um, 15, 6, and, uh, oh, I don't see an unet frames for 7. Hmm, that would be a problem. Unet frames for 4, uh, 6, 419, 6, 419, 15. I do not see an unet frames for, and there's an unet frames for the, uh, the, Oh, rescue! Just like there is a v, uh, VM Linux. I always call it VM v, VM VMUZ or something. I just just sometimes I uh, when I read stuff, I just without even thinking leave some letters out. And then there's a config for fifteen, seven, and six. Well, there's what's wrong with it. It's missing. So it is. It's, uh, well, there's no, okay, there's no, okay, when I ran that command to search for broken, uh, <clears throat> applications, bro what am I, yeah, broken applications, which I think it, it I think it should, would find broken kernel files too, you know, um, it's, um, <clears throat> I, I started things started coming to my head eyes did okay um it should show i think I, what i understood when i found the information on it and said to run it it was that's what i was searching for was you know trying to find out if you had a broken kernel and uh i didn't go in here i thought about it over and over and never to go in here to the boot directory i knew i, I knew that around in some i, I couldn't remember if, Sometimes I forget, you know, exactly where things are, but it just hit me exactly where they were just now. Anyway, um, what I'm thinking is, uh, okay, it's number seven that's broke. I'm going to copy this file name. I won't open it or anything. We are in root mode. we got to be careful. Cause ourselves even more trouble. Now, what I'm thinking, though, what popped into my head Especially when you're on your when you're on remote desktop, crazy things happen with your mouse, you know. So like that, you gotta hold it down instead of. Okay, now close. <clears throat> I want to search. Uh, there's a way to reinstall a kernel, and so if I hit reinstall kernel, at first I was thinking, well, I'll just delete this one here, since there's no matching INET frames for it. Yeah, I net frames. See, I, I swap numbers and letters with my eyes, so I actually see, in, in my unconscious mind, I see that F in front of that R, but that F is way down at the other end of the word. So I've always called that word I net frames, and then when I really stop and look at it, I net ram FS. So uh, yeah, probably people soon. I say that all the time and don't even realize I'm doing that. Okay, then config. For each one, so the thing that's missing is INET RAM. Okay, for that, so I could just delete the files, you know, to the one that's not working. But I think I'll try reinstalling that kernel. I just don't want it to come up to be the default kernel though. And then grub, there's grub two. That's where grub two is. And see, there's the grub config file, the made grub config. View it, open with Pluma. That would actually allow you to edit it, but you don't want to do that. And there's where the themes are. And still, there's a not 386 PC folder in there, but this is wouldn't. This is not a 386. That's a long file now. See, it's this is the one that says don't uh, don't edit this file now. Used to that's what you edited was grub config. Doesn't even want to let me go to the top of it. <clears throat> so long. Uh, but yeah, you don't edit grub config anymore. That was with grub one. Uh oh. Oh, I hit end. 
I meant to hit home so that it would go back to the top. I just realized that would be the same. Well, some file, sometimes you can do that and sometimes you can't. Yeah, it's not responding. It responded to uh, end. Depends on the application as to whether or not that works. I was almost up there. and then There we go. Okay, do not edit this file. Okay, so, but you can find out what's in there. Well, it's really hard to read now. It used to be real short and simple, about that long, <laughs> about 20 lines or so, or maybe 30, 40, depending on how much you had in there. But anyway, not that it was, it, Grub 2, you don't have to mess with it hardly at all, so it's actually really nice. And let's see what themes are in there. <clears throat> I got, I'm all curious now. Now, these are Grub themes. It's all you have is a background and a fireworks ping. That's for the themes, and then uh, I'm really getting where I want to install Crusader File Manager. I'm really getting tired of messing around in this. These are uh, Grub i386 PC. Now I know those are not music files. The, the, the file manager just doesn't know what to do with them. I'm not quite sure what those are, to be honest. I'm not going to mess them up. I don't want to mess them up. So nothing wrong with Grub, so let's don't, let's don't break it. Unicode PF2. Okay. I just haven't been in here in a while. So, so anyway, there's our problem. And you can re you can update Grub all day long, and, uh, and I've already done it enough to realize there's something wrong. So, um, well, I closed it. So when you close it, then uh, you usually can't restart it. Oh, it didn't error out. It usually. Anyway, I'm going to close. Well, let's see. Let's just find out. Now it worked. Okay, well, let's just leave through our open, but not in that folder. Used to, you couldn't do that. You, every time you got out of it, you'd have to close the terminal and open a new terminal, re-log in. Uh, but that didn't happen this time. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, <clears throat> this browser. I started to do it on that machine, but as slow as it reacts, it would be silly to try to use the web browser. Uh, with it, uh, you know, the remote desktop being slow. I'm even going to disconnect it until I need to get back to it. That usually helps to stop the flow of data. Yeah, see, I'm running audio over camera 2, video over camera 1, video over the 10-inch tablet, and then I'm running remote desktop. But that's on the wired remote desktop. But uh, it's still working the routers. The routers get overwhelmed after a while what happens I always have to keep rebooting my routers especially the Wi-Fi really gets in trouble and uh, when I'm doing this you know streaming cameras and stuff over my routers and I've this is a new new router it happens on every router I've done it on so the TP link the D link I have now and they're fat both of them are pretty fast routers the D links like well it's a gigabit router with uh, the Wi-Fi will do like 1200 megabits I don't have any anything wireless that can go that fast, but I've got. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the fastest thing I've got is actually, but anyway, yeah, it's not anywhere near that. <coughs> but I do have, if I remember right, uh, I think that Net Pro Max the machine. I'm, it doesn't act like it, but I think it has an onboard gigabit uh, Ethernet. I know the. Uh, the Nova i5 that I'm streaming with does, and I think I saw that in its specs, the Net Pro Max specs. Okay, so what I want to look for is Fedora 29 Linux reinstall kernel. There you go. So I did break that kernel. What did I do? What did I sp did I spell something wrong? Showing results for reinstall K E R N E L. Search instead for reinstall. It's the same, isn't it? K R E Oh re rin. No. Re R E I N S T I L L L K E R N E L. It's the same. See, my eyes get so messed up so easy, I, I just generally assume that that's right, but I'm learning uh, the hard way lately that that's not always right. Sometimes what I typed is right and what they want to tell you is wrong. What Google thinks is best is not always best. 
Sometimes you do know what you're searching for. For four twenty nine. Twenty nine Linux. Oh, server info. That's no twenty nine Linux. Okay, I don't have those differentiated between server and uh, just Fedora twenty nine. Okay. Up, manually update grading the kernel. I think what would happen, since it's an older kernel, I would have to downgrade and then upgrade, and I don't want to do that. So. Okay. But this looks like the information on doing that. Manually upgrading a kernel. Make sure I'm on the I'm on the desktop. Got audio. Okay. Fedora kernels are packaged in RPM. Okay. Oh, okay. You're using RPM command instead of DNS. Okay. So really. I wonder if I can go to, let's kind of look over this, but I'm wondering if I can go into uh, DNF, Gregora, and just look for that kernel. That's why I copied that name of that kernel into my clipboard. Use the DNF or package kit. They always install a new one instead of replacing the current one, which could potentially leave your system able to boot. Yeah, I don't want get into that other business and you could break, you could, could regret, go back a kernel and even break your system. I don't want to break it. It's working fine. So I don't want to do this. Don't even want to read anymore. So let's close this. Okay, now we're going to go back in here. Now, either you can go in here and uh, since this system, DNF is a heavy resource user, I think I can leave the terminal window open, but uh, well, that's not. Uh, <coughs> Hopefully that's still in my key in my uh, clipboard. I'm just going to paste that name of that kernel in there and see if it comes up after it gets through thinking and doing its thing. see it is not gonna happen fast let's see how long I've been going yeah I'm hour and 45 minutes almost I'm about I'm needing a break I'm just gonna I mean just gonna be sitting here waiting on this so I'm just gonna stop this video and uh, go take a break and then come back when that's ready to work all right so I'll be back here in a little bit <clears throat> 